Hey there, YouTube. It's me, Broken Terrain, and I've got my mill part two for you today. It's got my greatest crafting success and also my most epic of fails. Let's get to it right after the drop. To those very observant viewers, you'll notice that the door is actually up in uh, midair. I'm going to have to create a stairway and I wanted to do a bricked uh, bridge uh, going over the river and span. I thought that that would be uh, a real cool visual and uh, kind of a real romantic set piece for the mill. So I just took a little piece of XPS foam. Uh, curved out a little bit of an arch with my proxon and then just started hand doing a lot of the stonework. I wanted it to match the stonework on my mill and uh, frankly I, I enjoy doing this. I shouldn't. It's a lot of work but I do. I don't know why. I'm weird. <laughs> then I take my uh, my long crafting knife and I'm just going to texture around the outsides and give it that cliff look. It's going to match my, uh, my cliffs and other stony mountainous terrain that I've done in the past. Don't forget those uh, horizontal cuts as well. Perfect. Looking good. So there were a lot of amazing suggestions in uh, how to handle the fountain aspect of this piece. I did a test spray with some spray flex seal and uh, it looks like it worked out really well. But um, the reality was it wasn't a flat piece. It was um, a concave kind of carved out area and uh, the accelerant within the can does what accelerants do to foam. It ate it alive. In hindsight, I wish I had um, Mod Podged and protected the foam before I sprayed. I feel like that would have been a uh, better way to handle it. Instead, I did what I did and then I went back in with hot glue and tried to cover and, and stop up all of the holes and, and issues I saw on the foam and I kept my fingers crossed that that would take care of it. Meanwhile, while all that was uh, drying and setting, I moved to stain my water wheel. I used a dark walnut, <laughs> a ridiculously expensive stain. Um, boy, I spent so much money on this project, so I will not let these failures keep me from making it work. Uh, you have my word on that. Time to make some shingles. I used my shingle technique from uh, the modular house, only this time because of the templates and things, I made the shingle smaller. So instead of each shingle being a quarter inch, it is actually a 3 16th inch shingle. The smaller scale works much better for the uh, the boards from the templated walls. Once you go in and uh, have the proxon cut out each one of these little lines for the shingle, you just move your guard into place and just rip shingles. And this one piece of, uh, I want to say it was five inches worth of prepared foam for shingles, I have a metric ton of shingles. I was able to finish this mill um, no problem and I have at least one more project worth of shingles ready to go. Highly recommend this technique. It works amazingly well and um, uh, although I just saw a video with someone using a shingle template probably from the uh, same folk that, um, that I got my uh, other templates from shifting lands so uh, check them out I'm super jealous of the shingle template and it allows them to create a rounded ended uh, shingle that's really nice but my technique works amazingly well and uh, you're gonna see these shingles look really really good when done 
going to let the time lapse play a little bit and just say uh, thank you for watching this video. Please uh, hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. If you want to see uh, more crafting content like this, uh, please subscribe. And that way you'll get notified when, uh, when my videos drop. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Couldn't do this without you. To finish the uh, the tops of the roof, the roof cap there, I just ripped um, some more shingle thickness sized pieces of, uh, of XPS foam without the shingled marks of course, cut them into uh, little squares and hot glued them uh, along the middle and over both sides. This worked really well. Finally, with all the shingle work done, it was time to coat the entire building in my matte Mod Podge and black acrylic paint mixture. I'm going to hit the whole building and that's going to keep this thing protected, stiffen that foam, and give me a black base coat all in one step. And with that drying, I'm going to use my delicious honey brown and I'm gonna dry brush my stained water wheel and once I start hitting this with the honey brown I, I really fall in love with it all that uh, wood grain texture that I added to those popsicle sticks just uh, works with that paint beautifully I, I am in love with this water wheel I know it's a little janky it's a little weird it's not perfectly constructed but uh, I love it it's gorgeous and I and I hope that it matches the painted woodwork next I'm gonna move to the stonework on my mill I'm gonna start with a granite gray and just hit all of that stone with uh, the light gray color then uh, because I've really uh, really begin to love going in and coloring individual stones with different colors. I'm going to use my flamenco red, which is one of my brand new, like, I love you colors. I love this apple barrel flamenco red. It makes for a wonderful brick uh, color. It is a nice, vibrant red, but it's got a, uh, a nice earthy tone to it. Love it. Then I'm going to hit the building, uh, well, lots of little bricks, with my light cinnamon. We've already added some, uh, some honey. Let's add a little cinnamon. And this whole darn project is just going to be super, super delicious. <laughs> and then my lighter color, finally a little khaki. I'm going to go in, just hit a brick here or there. I'm going to make it look random, although it is far from it, and, uh, and I'm going to be really happy with the results. Finally, not finally, no, next, light buttermilk. I'm going to hit all of my plaster areas with the light buttermilk color. It's a little bit of an off-white. It really works well for this application and uh, it's one of my go-to colors. Next, my burnt umber. Uh, I picked this darker color to match the darker st uh, the stain on my water wheel. I'm gonna hit these boards and the the woodwork on this mill was really really challenging. You maybe you don't realize but all the the raised parts of the wood you need to get all those small edges it took a long time and 
two or three passes just to make sure that I did get all of them. It's really easy to miss one or two edges. I'm going to use this cobalt blue and hit my shingles with it. I love popping color into these builds and uh, a nice bright blue roof is where it's at. That's all my base colors. Time to add some wash. I, I have not perfected a homemade brown wash yet, so I turn to my very expensive but absolutely fantastic uh, Agrath Earthshade. Did I say that right? Citadel's Brown Wash. Uh, when you place it down on that buttermilk, you get this wonderful, wonderful aged stucco look that just works super well for these buildings. I used my homemade black wash on the stonework and I did each individual board um, with the black wash as well. And then I go back in with the honey brown and I dry brush all of the woodwork and trim. And it ends up matching my water wheel really well. Super excited. A little granite gray to dry brush the stone bring the brightness back up and then I decide to bring the brightness back up on my shingles. I mix that white, that blue, and I'm gonna let you hear how I feel about how it went. Oh, oh no. Woo. Well, that sure as fuck brightened it up. So par Damn. <laughs> pardon my French. Um, yeah, <laughs> it started a little bright. I worked it in and ended up ultimately being happy with the look of the shingles. So if something like that happens to you, don't worry about it. You can fix it. I'm going to hit the whole building and the water wheel with a clear coat. And I'm absolutely in love with the mill. It is my greatest uh, a terrain piece to, uh, to this moment and here is my epic fail the base you can see now i didn't see it yet but you can see the water has entered the electronics uh, area i have a massive leak somewhere and i'm trying to prime the pump the pump needs to get a little flow before it starts working and uh, i'm trying and trying and i don't see the leak yet and um, I finally see the water leaking on the table. And that's when I realize that the whole darn thing has failed. I've got water in the electronics and I'm gonna cut and let you hear the audio of that. Oh shit. Oh shit. It's failing. It's failing spectacularly. So, so there you go. My greatest achievement piggybacked by my greatest failure. <laughs> but don't worry, I haven't given up yet, but I do feel like I need to get my groove back. So expect a, uh, a different, very cool project for next week to kind of get my mojo back in order. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like each other, love each other, and craft on.